What's up, Sank gang? How are you guys? As you know, if you've been a subscriber with me for a while now, you know uh, at least once a week I post videos here and often I focus on the secrets to a trick. Some cool kind of trick, mentalism or uh, magic or something that's sort of half a prank, half an optical illusion, something that's a bird that's covered in honey and the nuns are circling it, muttering things, something like that. Uh, today's a little different. I'm very excited to share with you this video. This is a collection of tips for public speakers. Now, a whole bunch of you, or a bunch of you, sub have subscribed over the last several months to my other channel, which is called Connect and Influence, and it's all about the psychology of communication. And there are a bunch of cool videos on there that I think most magicians could get something out of. However, there's no question this will be of a big value. There's a lot of stuff in here, a lot of benefits for magicians and performers in general in today's video. In fact, from the moment, first day, that I shared this 10 tips for public speakers video on the other channel, uh, I got a bunch of emails and comments uh, from fellow magicians sort of saying, hey, this is great stuff for us too. So finally, I'm gonna mean to share this with you on the channel. So today I'm gonna share with you um, 10 tips for public speakers that I know a lot of you will be able to see value in. So that's on this video. I'm also going to announce uh, the winners uh, from last week, um, uh, holy moly winners. Very popular contest. Holy moly is a coin trick with washers I've been doing for years. Uh, definitely one of my most popular tricks I've ever released. And on this video, at some point, I won't say when, I'm gonna announce the name of the 12 winners. I hope it's you today, okay? I'm gonna announce that. Uh, plus, today is a chance for you to win one of 12 of my Hemisphere Mentalism Collections. And one of the things I developed, one of the ideas with Hemispheres, is I wanted to be mentalism that was as uh, startling for the, uh, sort of the, for, the, for the eyes as it is for startling for the mind. So it's really visually driven mental tricks, okay, on this project. And you're gonna have a chance uh, to win that uh, with, right now, in fact, I'm gonna tell you, this is the question of the week, okay? Very simple. Which of the 10 tips I share on this video speak the most to you? Out of all 10 tips, once you finish watching them, leave a comment and let me know which of the 10 tips resonated with you or struck a chord with you or you think you could learn the most from. Leave that comment down below and that'll be your instant uh, chance to win one of my uh, 12 Hemisphere projects. Number 10, speak slowly. This is definitely the most common mistake made by inexperienced public speakers. And unfortunately, when you speak quickly, you look nervous, and when you look nervous and uncertain, the information you're trying to convey seems suspect, and you don't come across as an authority. So make sure to speak slowly. Give each point its due. Make sure people have a sense that what you're saying is important, and don't be afraid to pause. Planting a pause during your presentation can be a great way to really add the drama to a point you just made, to come across as very confident yourself, and also give your audience a chance to process what you just shared. Number nine, keep it simple. Another classic mistake inexperienced public speakers make is adopting this tone or thinking that as soon as you get in front of people, you have to start using $100 words. But the exact opposite is actually what you should be striving for. Express what you're trying to express in the most simple, direct, and common terms possible. That way you'll seem comfortable, your audience will immediately understand what you're trying to say, and there'll be an inherent credibility in everything you're trying to share. Number eight, don't over-memorize. Amateur public speakers try to type out everything and then memorize the whole thing and then they get in front of the audience and three sentences in, they flub a word and they're done. They don't know how to get back to where they were. The problem with over-memorizing is it means you're not available to the audience. You're only focused on this script in your head. And what you wanna be doing is using words like arrows, sending them out. Ideas like arrows, sending them out. When you over-memorize your script, instead of being connect with the audience, the script becomes a wall between you and your audience. Number seven, always have a set list and a glass of water. So if you're not gonna memorize the whole script, you definitely want a list of points. Four points, eight points, 15 points, and each point should be represented by one word. And don't use file cards. I used to use file cards, and the problem is you need to shuffle them around, and you can lose your place, and you need something that's gonna help you at a glance. Memory cues. So what I typically do is I have a piece of paper, or I have a paper napkin, and I just have the points written down there just like that, on a stool, or on the podium, or on a chair, with a glass of water. 
because just when you think you're not gonna have nerves, you're gonna have nerves, and you're gonna wanna sip that water. Best of all, too, when you go for that water, every time you take a sip, you can just do a quick glance down at your list and you know exactly where you are in your presentation. And don't try to make a secret of your set list. You're not trying to cheat, you're just trying to keep your presentation moving forward. Number six, do more with less. So often inexperienced public speakers will try to cover this much information or this much information and you'll find after you present something several times you end up trying to cover half the information you ever thought you would. That's because you instinctively start to drill into that information. You start to inspire people to care more about the points. You spend time talking about the relationships between the points or even hitting some of the points from different angles. Rather than trying to cover a whole bunch of stuff really quickly, slow it down and drill in. That way they'll care more and they'll learn more. You ready for this? Here are the 12 winners of last week's Holy Moly Contest. Holy Moly uh, Coin Trick Contest. As always, if, you had, if your name comes up right now, and I hope it does, uh, send an email right away. Send an email to my team at contact at sankeymatic.com uh, with your full name, your shipping address, and we'll ship out your prize. Today, this week, the winners are Scoozy. That's like, or is the Italian? Excuse me, is that even real? I don't know if it's real or it's just some ridiculous stereotype. Or something. But Scoozy, you won. Jordan Sargent, you won. Peter Parkinson, almost like Peter Parker. Oh, Peter Parker. Ah, uh, David Grass. <laughs> I don't know if his last name is going to make sure that he doesn't remember his address. I don't know. David Grass, Jason Rourke, Tommy Little, Jan Pascal, Finn Weber, Dukin Killick. Dukan Killick, Joel Thomas, Red Ninja, not the Blue Ninja, you lost, Red Ninja won, and Dio Brandon. So those are the 12 winners. If you won, contact my team and congratulations. Number five, the order of the information is as important as the information itself. It's very important for you to spend a lot of time, not just developing the key points to your presentation, but in what order do you want to present them? At my workshops, I always emphasize that you should spend as much time figuring out the order of your points as you do the actual points themselves. No matter how dry the information you're trying to share, it's always essentially a story. There's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an end. I don't care what the information is. Your first point is your beginning, your last point, your end. And it's very important to spend time not just developing the points, but trying to figure out the order of the points. What makes them interesting? What makes them relevant? How do they relate to each other? It's key to spend a lot of time on this. Number four, the first 30 seconds are critical. In the first 30 seconds, your audience makes so many important decisions. They decide if they like you. They decide how smart you seem. They decide how important your information is. They decide how confident you are. And all of those things dramatically frame the information you're trying to share. Don't just launch into your material. Instead, take a moment, acknowledge the audience. Make sure that you either explicitly or implicitly thank them for their time. Only after you've established that connection should you then begin to share your information. Number three, always be responding. Marketers and salespeople love to talk about ABC. Always be closing. But when it comes to effective public speaking, ABR, always be responding. Always be looking at the audience. Always getting a sense of how your information is hitting them. Check your pacing. The audience will tell you everything. They'll tell you what they're liking. They'll tell you when it's time to move on. One of the big keys to public speaking is to keep in mind that, you know, your good information represents about 40% of what makes a public event like that so effective. But 60% is about having that connection with the audience. Number two. Believe in the value of what you're sharing. The second best salespeople in the entire world are brilliant actors. They're able to fake their belief in what they're trying to sell. But the best salespeople believe in their product. And the same applies to public speaking. You need to feel that what you're sharing is of value. You need to believe that you have a right to be up there and sharing your ideas with people. This is key because that will make you credible. And when you're credible, people will buy into what you're saying. This is why it's so important for you to stick to what you know. And as you practice and rehearse your presentation, if there's a piece of information or if there's a line or if there's something that doesn't quite feel right for you and you're not quite sure how to change it, cut it. And number one, practice, practice, practice. Now, of course, you're going to want to rehearse your presentation many times so you have the information down. But there's an even more important reason to rehearse again and again. 
And that is because you want to be able to get past having to think about the information so you can focus on the real job. And the real job is bringing that information to life. It's about connecting with the audience, connecting with the information. And when you're rehearsing, make sure to time yourself. It can be very revealing. Go slowly, plant pauses, sip your water, check your set list. You'll see how long your presentation is really going to take. And definitely do not rehearse in front of a mirror. Because all that does is it puts your focus back on you when in fact where you need your focus is on the audience and on the material. Those are the 10 tips. I certainly hope that at least one of them resonated with you or something that jogs something in your brain. You go, man, I got to remember that one. And for your chance to win one of 12 of my hemisphere sort of mentalism for the eyes project, leave a comment down below and let me know which of these 10 tips was the one that really spoke to you. Leave that comment, be automatically entered. And hey, while you're at it, click the like button. Fair enough, click that like button. And of course, subscribe to the uh, Connect and Influence channel. Uh, I post a whole bunch of videos up there all about the psychology of connecting with people, communication. Subscribe to my Connect and Influence channel. I'll leave, a, I'll leave a link after the video right down below. To learn how to read someone's mind using only a rubber band, click there. To learn how to bend a spoon with the power of your mind alone, click there. And to subscribe to my Connect and Influence psychology channel, click down there.